Hello friends, this video on reproduction in animals part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So, now we are going to talk about the reproductive organs in males and then we will talk about the reproductive organ in female. So, here we will discuss about the various parts of the male reproductive system and we will see how male gamete is produced. So, human male reproductive system. So, overall this system consists of the following important organs. So, first of all, testis. So, these are a pair of testes. So, you have one testis on each side of the penis. So, this is your testis. And they exist in pairs. Next is vas difference. Next is vas deferens. So vas deferens is this tube-like structure which we have here. That is vas deferens. Mm -hmm. Next we have scrotum. So scrotum is this covering which is present outside the testis. So this part is scrotum. Next is urethra. So urethra is this pipe like structures which we see here that is urethra. So now please don't worry in the next slide we will talk about their functions what do they do and why are they present here. Next is the epididymis. So where do we have epididymis? It is basically this tube like structure so from the vast difference then it comes to the epididymis and from there it joins the urethra and finally the penis. So this is the penis. This entire structure is the pens. Now other than these also, there are quite a few important reproductive glands which are present in a human male. So where are the reproductive glands? So let us look at the important reproductive glands. So they are prostate gland, seminal vesicles and cowper's glands. So these are the three important reproductive glands. So wh where do we have them? So let us have a look at them. So here you have one structure which is a gland called seminal vesicle. So you have seminal vesicle here. Where do we have the prostate gland? So this one is a prostate gland. This is prostrate gland and where do we have the cowper's gland? So just below this prostrate gland you have two small structures called the cowper's gland. So we will talk about each of these in the next few slides. So here you have the testis which is enclosed inside the scrotum. From testis you have a coiled tube like structure called epididymis. And then this epididymis opens into the vas deferens. That is this. In fact, I think it would have been better if I would have represented it like this. So let us suppose this is the vas deferens. This tube-like structure which you see. And here you have this coiled tube-like structure and that is called epididymis. So epididymis is the coiled initial part. From epididymis arises the tube-like structure called vas deferens and then this vas deferens finally joins the urethra and then through urethra it opens to the exterior. So that is how the internal structure is. So now let us talk about the function of each of these parts. So let us start with testis. So testis occurs in pairs as I said there are there is one testis present on each side of the penis. So testis occurs in pairs and its main job is to produce sperms. Now for sperm production, uh, a temperature little higher than the body temperature is required. And that is why the testis is located outside the body in a separate structure called scrotum. So if you look at the structure of a human male body, if, if you have a sample in your bio laboratory, then you can have a look that testis is not a part of the body. Outside the body, a bag like structure is formed which is called scrotum and inside that scrotum, testis is located. It is just done in that way so that appropriate temperature for sperm production can be given and then sperms can be produced. Now what are sperms? So sperms are nothing but the male gametes. So male gametes are called sperms. You can call them the male sex cells as well. 
So they also produce the male hormone called testosterone. And what is the purpose of this hormone? It is because of this male hormone that the male characteristics are seen in a person. For example, appearance of beard, appearance of moustaches, their facial hair, body hair, all these are male traits. And all these traits are due to the presence or due to the secretion of the male hormone called testosterone. So this hormone is also secreted by testis. So testis consists of many coiled tube-like structures which are lined by epithelial cells which divide and form sperms. So if you look at the structure of testis, you will actually see that it is a bag-like structure like this and which is present inside the scrotum. Now inside this testis, you again have some coiled structure like this, coiled tube-like structures. And these tube-like structures, they are lined with epithelial cells. And epithelial cells, they will keep on dividing continuously to form more cells and that's how sperms will be produced. So sperm production is the main function of testis and production of testosterone. Next is scrotum. So what is scrotum? It is an extension of abdominal cavity which contains the testis. So why do we have this special extension? As I was telling just now, so that a test, the appropriate temperature can be maintained within the scrotum so that sperms can be produced. So in a way, it also protects the testis because testis, they are doing the most important job. That is, they are producing the male sex cells. If male gametes are not produced, reproduction cannot take place. So testis, they are doing the primary function. So protecting them is also important. So for that purpose, we have this additional cavity called scrotum. It maintains a temperature lower than the body temperature because this is the appropriate temperature which is required for the production of sperms. So at our body temperature, sperms cannot be produced. So to maintain a temperature lesser than the body temperature, we have a separate cavity that is scrotum and inside that we have the testis. Next part is epididymis. This is also a tube-like structure in scrotum. So it starts immediately after the testis. So it stores sperms, helps in passage of sperms. Now sperms are produced in the testis. Testis is protected by the scrotum. Now from testis, the sperm needs to be carried out of the male body. So that means it has to be taken, first of all, it has to be taken out of the testis. So it is taken out of the testis by this tube-like structure called epididymis. So epididymis is a very coiled tube-like structure. So if you look at this, this is testis. So inside this test is appropriate temperature is maintained so that sperms can be produced. Now once sperms are produced in the testis, it is taken up by this coiled structure called the epididymis. So here you have epididymis and this entire testis is present inside the scrotum. So here if you see this part is called scrotum because it is an additional extension of the abdominal cavity. So this is your abdominal cavity. So it is like an extension. So this portion is an extension of the abdominal cavity. Next is vas deferens. So vas deferens is again a tube-like structure which emerges from the lower part of epididymis. So from epididymis again a tube-like structure starts and it goes till the pelvic cavity and it finally opens to the ejaculatory duct. Ejaculation. What is the meaning of ejaculation? To ejaculate means to release. So finally it reaches a tube-like structure which releases the sperms to the external. That means to outside. So this vast difference will help in, in carrying sperms from epididymis till it reaches the exterior. Now there will be a tube which will be coming from the urinary bladder and it will unite with this. So let us have a look at the picture also side by side. That will help you to understand better. So this tube-like structure is the vas deferens. So what will it do? This will carry, take the sperm from the epididymis and then carry the sperm in this way. So then at this point, there will be another tube which is coming from the urinary bladder. So this structure which you see here is urinary bladder. What is the function of urinary bladder? It stores urine. So a tube coming from urinary bladder, this tube will unite with the vas deferens. So this was vas deferens. 
So vas deferens and urinary bladder tube, both of them will unite to form the ejaculatory duct and this ejaculatory duct will later form the urethra and through urethra it will open to the outside. So this one is the ejaculatory duct because through this the sperms will be released outside. So next part is the penis. So it is the muscular copulatory organ. So, penis is that organ which is visible from outside and when it is stimulated, it can discharge the sperms. So, it can, when it is stimulated, then what happens is the tissues of the penis, they get filled with blood, making it firm and erect. So, now when the penis becomes erect, then it can be inserted into the female body and that's how the sperms can be inserted into the female body because for reproduction to take place what do we want we want the male gamete and the female gamete to fuse so for that purpose the male gamete and the female gamete needs to meet each other we know that female gamete will be produced inside the female body male gamete is produced inside the male body now if both of them want to meet then either the male gamete will have to travel inside the female body or the female gamete will have to travel inside the male body but we know that the female gametes are non-motile they cannot move but male gametes can move so we have to make an arrangement so that the male gametes can be injected into the female body so for that purpose we have this organ called penis because penis is an elongated organ which is muscular in nature therefore when it is stimulated the muscles stiffen out they are however it is made up of loose muscles but when it gets filled with blood it becomes erect and firm and, and in that situation it can be well inserted inside the vagina of female now when i talk about the female reproductive parts then it will become clear to you that how penis can be inserted inside the female reproductive part so the main purpose of penis is to discharge the sperms when stimulated discharging sperms at the right place is the main function of penis and it is made up of loose muscles now since it is muscular in nature that helps because because of that property only it, it get, becomes erect and firm when stimulated then the next one that is urethra. So urethra is a tube-like structure which is a common passage for both sperms and urine. So vas deferens was a passage for sperms. This urinary bladder, the tract coming, the tube coming out of urinary bladder, this is a passage for urine. But when this passage and this passage, they both combine together, they form the urethra. So urethra carries both sperm as well as urine. So it passes through the penis to open to the outside. So it passes through the penis and finally opens to the outside. So this is urethra. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.